Okay, one of your interests is Albert Hubbard and the Roy Crofters. Do you remember how you first learned about Albert Hubbard and his books? No, I really don't remember. Hmm. Uh, I don't remember when I first saw that. Do you? Well, I think it was back in the 70s. And <clears throat> I can't remember. I thought maybe somebody over by Monticello might have had <clears throat> uh, the Little Journeys books. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, okay. Walt Hedinger. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mom bought that at a rummage sale. Okay. A uh, whole <laughs> set of books. Uh, but that's how I got interested in uh, Roy Crofters. Uh, okay. Uh, Albert Hubbard. Okay, well, <clears throat> for people who don't know, uh, the Roycroft community was established in 1894 by a man named Albert Hubbard, who had been a salesman and a part owner of the Larkin Soap Company in Buffalo, New York. And he made a lot of money at the soap company, <clears throat> and he was still a fairly young man, so he sold out there and moved to East Aurora, which was a fairly small town uh, which is in Erie County, New York, not too far from the Pennsylvania border. And around that time he visited England and he visited uh, William Morris at his arts and crafts studio and, and was impressed with the work that Morris was doing in making furniture and having a, a book printing business. <clears throat> so Hubbard came back and incorporated William Morris's ideas uh, into his own Roycroft community. And the word Roycroft means king's house. So <clears throat> uh, before too long, he established a community that had uh, a book bindery and a leather shop and a furniture making establishment a leather works and they also did uh, hand hammered metal work out of um, copper and other things. And um, Hubbard is probably best known for his books and also his magazines and the, uh, the books. Well, the one you're most familiar with or, or like the best is, is uh, Albert Hubbard's scrapbook, which is a compilation of short writings of all kinds of people from over the centuries. But he also, I, and I'm not sure, he might have written those articles himself. He did a series called Little Journeys. And so each volume would be, um, one might be Little Journeys to the Homes of Great Inventors, and another one, Little Journeys to the Homes of... Uh, philosophers. Yeah, philosophers and so forth. It's a, about 15 or 20 volume set. Each chapter will cover a different person. And he might have, have written those, I'm not sure about that. I think he did. <laughs> Another thing that he wrote is that message to Garcia. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and he, he in, was on top of it, wasn't he? In, uh, he was also a, <clears throat> a very good promoter. Um, and the, the, he was able to, to uh, entice master craftsmen to come to East Aurora and, and work um, in, in his different shops. <clears throat> um, and the, the books were available in a number of different price ranges. And so if, if you didn't want to spend, didn't have much money to spend, 
you could get just a, a regular hardbound volume. And if you had more money, uh, the next step up would be sort of a suede cover. <clears throat> and then the top of the line was a very high quality cowhide leather that was hand tooled. And even on some of the cheaper books, there were hand colored, uh, or they called it hand illumined uh, pieces in, inside where uh, a, a craftsman would actually take time with colored pencils and color in pictures inside. And the books almost all ended with the words so here endeth this little journey to the home of Socrates or whoever it was, done into a book by the Roycrofters at their shop in East Aurora, which is in Erie County. <laughs> And in 1903, Hubbard built the Roycroft Inn so that he could house visitors who came uh, to, to see the Roycroft community. And uh, the whole enterprise started to, to go downhill when Hubbard and his wife died with, uh, when the Lusitania was sunk in 1915, and one of Hubbard's sons tried to keep the business going, uh, and it sort of stumbled along until the Depression started, and then everything closed up. <clears throat> but um, the, the Roycroft campus has been revitalized in the last 25 years or so. The Roycroft Inn has been reopened, and we had dinner there once about 10 years ago.